This presentation is brought to you by the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. My name is Dr. Rajiv Kumar and I am the director of the Movement Disorder Center at the Colorado Neurological Institute. In this installment, we are going to review how the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is made. There are many other disorders which can mimic Parkinson's disease and expertise in the diagnosis and treatment of movement disorders is very helpful. Nevertheless, even in the best of hands, misdiagnosis rate may be as high as 10%. It is important to continuously reassess the diagnosis with repeated exams, just in case the diagnosis may change. Parkinsonism is a syndrome consisting of tremor, rigidity or stiffness of muscles and joints, bradykinesia or slowness of movement, and postural instability or reduced balance. There are many causes of Parkinsonism, but Parkinson's disease is the most common. Parkinson's disease is a slowly progressive specific neurodegenerative disorder. There are a variety of both degenerative and non-degenerative forms of Parkinsonism, and Parkinson's disease accounts for approximately 75% of cases. Other causes of Parkinsonism are predominantly referred to as atypical Parkinsonisms or atypical Parkinsonian syndromes. The most common of these are PSP or progressive supranuclear palsy and MSA or multiple systems atrophy. These atypical Parkinsonian disorders usually have findings not seen in Parkinson's disease either at the onset or as the disease progresses. However, they may mimic Parkinson's disease initially, making them difficult to differentiate. Essential tremor is another common disorder that is characterized by postural and action tremor, but with no significant bradykinesia or rigidity. Occasionally, especially when superimposed on the slowness that may accompany normal aging, essential tremor may be confused with Parkinson's disease. There are other secondary causes of Parkinsonism, including multiple strokes, which can cause vascular Parkinsonism, and exposure to certain dopamine-blocking drugs, such as antipsychotic medications and medications for nausea and vomiting. These can cause drug-induced Parkinsonism. The diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is predominantly clinical based on history and physical examination. The detection of a gradually progressive asymmetric disorder with characteristic findings on examination and lack of other abnormalities suggesting another diagnosis is essential. Additional findings that may help in the diagnosis include micrographia or small handwriting, stooped posture, reduced facial expression, and a soft voice or hypophonia. Even in the best of hands, the average accuracy of diagnosis is about 90% in early Parkinson's disease. This diagnostic accuracy is dependent upon the expertise and experience of the physician. As a result, the likelihood of correct diagnosis is highest with a movement disorder specialist, somewhat less with a general neurologist, and lesser so with a generalized physician. Due to the strong overlap in findings, many patients who have atypical Parkinsonian syndromes may initially be mistaken to have Parkinson's disease and only correctly diagnosed as atypical findings develop over time. A DAT scan or dopamine transporter scan is a nuclear medicine scan in which a radionuclide which binds to dopamine cells is used by identifying the relative number of remaining dopamine cells in the brain. The scan can be helpful in differentiating between disorders that cause loss of dopamine cells, such as Parkinson's disease, multiple systems atrophy, and progressive supranuclear palsy, between other disorders which do not cause loss of dopamine cells, such as essential tremor or drug-induced Parkinsonism. Unfortunately, DAT scan cannot differentiate amongst the different neurodegenerative forms of Parkinsonism. For example, it cannot differentiate between Parkinson's disease and progressive supranuclear palsy. The image on the left side demonstrates a near-normal DAT scan with very mild dopaminergic cell loss of the left brain. This is shown here on the right side as the image is inverted. The reduced uptake is shown by the asymmetric white area. This patient has early Parkinson's disease. The image on the right side shows advanced disease with significant dopaminergic cell loss in the left brain and mild cell loss in the right brain, as seen by the diminished white areas. Again, the image is inverted. 
As we've discussed in today's video installment, the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease can sometimes be rather challenging, since there are a number of disorders which can mimic Parkinson's disease. It's important to be certain about the diagnosis because treatments between the different Parkinsonian disorders as well as the prognosis can vary substantially. Reassessing the diagnosis as symptoms change or as response to therapy or lack of response to therapy becomes clearer can be very helpful. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video installment and for additional information we'll visit our website. Please join us for the next installment of our Parkinson's Education video series.